There are 66 books that make up the canon of scripture. And it was finished with the book of Revelation, and there is no better way of finishing the Bible than with the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation is written to us to reveal the things to come. What are some of the things it reveals to us? It reveals to us Jesus Christ. Revelation 1 verse 12 to 14 Then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the feet and girded about the chest with a golden band. His head and hair were white like wool and white as snow, and his eyes like a flame of fire. Revelation reveals to us the Eternal One, the Lord Jesus Christ, the One from everlasting to everlasting. The Lord Jesus Christ did not have a beginning in Bethlehem of Judea. He is the Eternal One, the Judge and the King. He is God Almighty, the Judge and Ruler. He has always been here and will forever be here. And that is where the book of Revelation begins. It begins by identifying Christ and putting in his rightful place as God and revealing who he really is. If you truly want to know who Jesus Christ is, go to the book of Revelation. In Revelation 4, the throne in heaven is revealed to us. When John says, Immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he who sat there was like a jasper and a sardius stone in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne in appearance like an emerald. And around the throne of God were the four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within, and they do not rest day or night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. In Revelation 6 through to 8, we see the seals being opened one after the other, one after the other. And the earth will see a time like never before. And in Revelation 8, the seventh seal is open, and something strange happens. This is the only time recorded in the Bible where this will happen. All heaven will be in silence. For about half an hour, complete and utter silence. All oh, the innumerable number of angels and the saints of God that are now in heaven will all be silent for half an hour. Why? Because the trumpets are about sounded upon earth. And for thirty minutes, all of heaven is silent. And then finally, Revelation 8, verse 2 to 6 reads, And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Then another angel, having a golden censer, came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints ascended before God from the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and threw it to the earth. And there were noises thunderings, lightnings, and an earthquake. And then we see the trumpets being blown. The first trumpet caused the vegetation to be struck, 
and a third of the trees were burned up, and all green grass was burned up. The second trumpet caused the seas to be struck. John saw the second angel sounding his trumpet, and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea. The third trumpet caused the waters to be struck. Then the third angel sounded, and a great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. Then the fourth trumpet, the heaven struck. Revelation 9 verse 12 reads, Then the fourth angel sounded, and a third of the sun was struck, and a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of them were darkened. A third of the day did not shine, and likewise the night. And I looked and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth, because of the remaining blasts of the trumpet of the three angels who are about to sound. Then the fifth trumpet, Apollyon the destroyer, was released. No wonder heaven was silent for half an hour. So the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound, and the seven angels will sound each trumpet. And the seven angels will sound their trumpet one by one, and each trumpet is associated with a major event. This is why all heaven is silent. Heaven knows what the seven trumpets mean. For instance, the fifth trumpet will be the release of the locusts from the bottomless pit. And then when we get to Revelation 13 and 14, which is what we are looking at today, it speaks of a time that you cannot buy and cannot sell. To understand this message completely, you have to listen to part one which you can find in the description box below. In the first part of the book of Revelation, is unfolding before our eyes. We spoke of the fact that something will come forth from the depths of the sea and will take center stage in human history. John saw a beast rising from the sea who was the sixth of seven major figures described in this part of Revelation. He is the false messiah, the man of sin, the son of perdition, known as the Antichrist. We did briefly mention a second beast that will come from the depths of the earth, and that is who we will be looking at today. Revelation 13 verse 11 and 12 Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and spoke like a dragon. And he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence, and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. John saw another beast. This second beast is the seventh dominant character described in this part of Revelation. It had two horns like a lamb, and it spoke like a dragon. This beast was rising from the earth. Many Bible teachers, if not most, view the first beast, the beast from the sea, as the Antichrist. And most agree that the second beast is the false prophet. However, Neither of these beasts are specifically named in the book of Revelations, so this designation is not crucial, and no one should be dogmatic about identifying them. But we do know they both are against Christ. Now, back to Revelation chapter 13, verses 11 through 12. Notice the mission of the second beast. Verse 12 tells us this beast comes to cause the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast. The job of this beast is to make the people worship the first beast. Note the word worship 
That is the real message here that we must hold on to in this sermon. Worship. The second beast caused people to worship the first beast. Revelation chapter 13 verses 16 through 17 clearly reveals that the center of attraction is worship. This warfare is basically a battle of who we must worship. It reads, And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand, or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save that he had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. The beast, whose aim is to promote the interest of the devil, will compel everyone to receive a mark by which they will be identified with the beast. This is not going to be optional, as many that refuse to accept the mark of the beast will not be able to buy or sell. The central issue is that of worship. The two beasts would want all of humanity to focus on them so that they can become the object of worship. The beasts want to restrain everyone from worshiping the one and only true God. But the Christians that will be living through this period will be required to hang on. They will be required to place their faith in God even in impossible odds like these. People will be face to face with the option of having to choose who exactly they will serve, either God or the devil. At this point, no one can pretend to be serving God while he or she is not, because you have to choose between two options which will clearly reveal your stand. It is all about worship. That is the central theme. It is amazing that in the next chapter after the revelation of the two beasts, John saw three angels that were sent by God to evangelize the eternal gospel. The period of the operation of the beast will be a tough season for the believers who will be on earth at that time. And that's an understatement. Over the ages, no amount of persecution that arose against the church has been able to successfully obstruct the spread of the gospel. Three angels will be deployed to carry out the mission of evangelizing the world. Revelation chapter 14 verses 6 through 7 records the mission of the first angel thus. Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, and saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and springs of water. The first angel brought the everlasting gospel, not just for a set of people, but for all the inhabitants of the earth. Sinners will have no excuse for not having heard the gospel because the voice of this angel will be so loud that everyone will hear it. I don't know how, but that angel will communicate in a way in which everyone in every language will be able to understand him. The devil has so much deceived and hardened the hearts of people to the point that even after an angel has proclaimed the gospel to them, they will still not repent from their sins. Imagine seeing an angel and still not believe in the gospel. Hearing and seeing an angel fly above you, but not taking heed of that warning. This is the very reason the judgment of God over sinners will be justified. Note that the first angel proclaimed that the inhabitants of the earth should fear God and worship him. Notice again that wonderful seven-letter word, worship. So the battle is that of worship. The beasts want to become the object of worship. To achieve this, they will encourage the mark of the beast. The angel also warned the inhabitants of the earth about the judgment of God, asking them to fear God and direct their worship to him. This is the reason believers must take their stand and refuse to direct their worship to none other but God. The second angel proclaimed the fall of Babylon, the city that caused many nations to fall. Babylon has to incur the wrath of God because not only was she perverse, she also perverted other nations. The message of the third angel is also similar to that of the first angel. Revelation chapter 14 verses 9 through 10 relates it thus. Then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image, and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, then he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. 
The third angel reiterates that anyone that worships the beast will incur the wrath of God. For God to have sent two angels out of three to declare that he is the only one who is worthy to be praised, then the matter of who to worship is a serious one. God hates idolatry, and he has zero tolerance for it. Anyone who receives the mark of the beast, either in his or her forehead or right hand, is automatically enlisted for eternal destruction. Those who choose to worship the beast will have no rest forever, as told in the Bible. The battle of who to worship predates the creation of the world. It all started from heaven before the existence of humanity. The devil has always tried to usurp the worship that should be directed to God for himself. Remember that the devil asked Jesus to bow down and worship to him with a promise to give him all the glories of this world. But Jesus shut his mouth with the word of God. Initially, God made the devil as an archangel that was in charge of worship. He was very close to the throne of God, and his assignment was to worship God forever. However, pride was found in the devil, and his plot to lift his throne above the throne of God was discovered. This he thought to do so that he might become the object of worship. Since the devil failed in his plans, he was cast down to the earth, where he deceived Adam and Eve and tried to turn the heart of the entire human race to himself. Believers should not be ignorant of the devices of the devil. God rules and reigns supreme over the entire universe. Those who take their stand for God will never regret having to do so. The prophecy of the two beasts is yet to be fulfilled. So you see, the issue here is to do with worship. The devil has always been after worship. 